680's Richard Southern joins us. Richard, uh, Francis is away. Cynthia's out in a big story. So you're scraping the bottom of the barrel with Lucky, me today. No, no. Lucky you. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Adrian Gobriel yes. joining us. It's always nice to have you joining us, Adrian. Thank you, Richard. It's always nice to join you as well. And as we're hearing today, we could now be paying our next parking ticket or property tax bill using Bitcoin. You're looking at a push by a city councillor to make that happen? Yeah, you know who it is, Adrian? It's Mr. Norm Kelly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he says he wants the city to accept Bitcoin in exchange for parking tickets, uh, for uh, water bills, for land transfer, taxes, things like that. Uh, Kelly says he'll bring up the idea at council at the end of the month. So uh, why should we be doing this? Is this a good idea? We caught up with Councillor Kelly at City Hall today. If cryptocurrency becomes uh, part of our system, then it gives City Hall a chance to, uh, to uh, look into options to pay the things that it has to pay for. And with an 11 to $13 billion a year budget, uh, that's a lot of money that uh, is involved, and there could be uh, maybe considerable savings in there. And what I want right now uh, is uh, our financial experts uh, in the finance department at City Hall to take a close look at cryptocurrencies, and there are a variety of them, to see how they may be used to benefit the residents of the city and City Hall as well. If nothing happens, at least it reinforces the brand of the City of Toronto. It's a city that's forward-looking, that embraces innovation, and is always looking to uh, ride the wave rather than uh, fight it. Here's the problem, though, Adrian. Uh, there's a reason why businesses don't accept Bitcoin. It's because it could go to zero tomorrow. It's that volatile. So it would be highly risky for the city uh, to accept the digital currency. And by the way, we should mention that uh, Norm Kelly, on his website where he sells merchandise, he accepts Bitcoin oh, in exchange for well. Norm Kelly hats and T-shirts and such. Well, I wonder how he'll feel if Bitcoin drops to zero for those shirts. <laughs> the six dad will be hurting, essentially. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Now, a troubling report out if you're staring down the barrel of mounting debt, we could see more interest rate hikes coming, and a third of Canadians can't make their monthly payments. Yeah, think about that. 33% of Canadians say they just can't cover the monthly bills as it is now. And as you say, we could be facing hiring, higher borrowing costs later this week. So 33% of Canadians not able to meet those monthly expenses, according to this new report from the NMP group. Uh, it also finds that half of Canadians are within $200 of not being able to pay their bills. They're within a paycheck. Uh, Canadians that can cover the monthly expenses are seeing less money left over at the end of the month amid higher borrowing costs. They only have about 600 bucks left at the end of the month. Uh, this Wednesday, the bank very likely to increase interest rates after doing so twice last year. We'll continue to watch this story, Adrian, because as you know, it could have major implications for the already cooling housing market in the city as well. Yeah, exactly, with mortgage rates being already what they are for sure. They're already going up. Right? Yeah. Remember Bank of Montreal TD hanking rates last week already. And a nail in the coffin for Sears Canada finally, finally closing their doors. Yeah. And it is sad, of course, because of all the jobs affected here. But uh, the few remaining Sears Canada stores that were open closed their doors for good last night. Sears, of course, uh, declaring bankruptcy last year, announcing in the fall it would liquidate the remaining stores. 15,000 people out of work as a result. And Adrian, they still have Sears in the States, but uh, that uh, division of the company hanging on by a thread doesn't look good for them either. I, I can't imagine driving south of the border to go shop at Sears for some reason. It just doesn't just, work for me. No. no. I lost that cache when we can go online now and buy so much stuff. Yeah. Now this next story here is going to get plenty of groans. Changes in the sky. More airlines are ditching reclining seats. What do you think? Yay or nay? I think some people might like this. Uh, you know, I guess it's a bit of a double-edged sword. If you're, if you're six foot plus, you know, you hate when that person reclines their seat on your knees, but you also might want a little recline. You might. Um, but So British Airways becoming the latest airline to do away with seats that recline. They're doing this on their sort of shorter haul flights, flights up to four hours. So if you're flying a BA out of Toronto, you're not going to be affected by this yet. Uh, but uh, British Airways joining the likes of Allegiant Air, Ryanair, and Norwegian and phasing out these seats. British Airways reasoning is that the non-reclining seats will prevent passengers from encroaching on the legroom and table space of the passengers behind them, 
Of course, we've also seen some air rage incidents related to that. I'm sure the airlines <laughs> eager to cut down on the fights aboard the planes, Adrian. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't like it. I need, I need a reclining seat. It's tough enough to, to get some rest, get some shut eye on a flight. I find them uncomfortable. You're moving this way, you're moving that way. Just a couple inches of a recline can, can be a big help. I know. But then you get the guy with the, the laptop behind you, and he's like, come on, Adrian. What are you doing here? Trying to work. Well, maybe if you have a few more beers on your flight, you'll be able to sleep a little easier. And a new report <laughs> is looking at the economic importance of subs to Canada. Yeah, it's very important. Conference Board of Canada says uh, the beer industry adds $13.6 billion annually wow. to the economy. And spending... That's a lot of beer. It is a lot of beer. And spending on uh, beer and the whole industry supports about 149,000 jobs. Conference Board says beer continues to be the most popular alcoholic beverage in Canada, although uh, per capita consumption is down over the past few years. So we are drinking less of it. Overall, though, the report found that Canadians bought the equivalent of 220 three bottles of beer per person last year and Adrian the beer industry says it's nervous because alcohol taxes are going up in the spring as well they're not sure what type of effect legal marijuana will have on the uh, alcohol business. I, I feel like we could have an impact on that per capita consumption. <laughs> we'll we, drive it up you and me. <laughs> we should get together for a beer soon Richard. Let's do it. Thanks so much. Thanks. Brandon over to you.